Hey there, welcome to Docker Community All Hand Events. Hope you are enjoying the show. Today I am here to invite some of the leading Docker extension publishers. Definitely this is a great opportunity for all of us to listen to their extension stories and see what problem they are trying to solve with these extensions. But before I jump into the conversation, I would like to take one minute of your time and brief you about the extensions. Now, if you have been involved in building a microservices architecture, I'm sure you are already aware of the moving pieces. It takes a lot and lot and effort and time to understand how things glue up together, right? With the number of growing developer tools and that to being decentralized in nature, it becomes so much harder to install and manage and use these application services. And now that's where your Docker extension come into the picture. Now with extensions, your developers can integrate their tools right into the Docker desktop, which means that now your developers can seamlessly connect their favorite development tools into their applications and the deployment workflow. So with this, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Joyce Lin. She is a developer advocate at Postman. She has been working with the Postman for more than around five years now. And today she will be sharing her story about the new extension her team is building, rightly called as Newman Docker Extension. Over to you, Joyce. Thanks for that introduction, Ajit. Let's jump into it. Postman is an API platform used by over 20 million developers around the world. There's a lot of stuff that Postman does, but there's one thing from the very beginning that the Postman community has absolutely loved. One feature is a crowd favorite. In the same way that containers are the foundational building blocks for the more advanced stuff that you could do in Docker, Postman has collections. That's the foundational building block for the more advanced stuff you could do in Postman. So what is a Postman collection? At its simplest, a collection is a group of API requests. Having a sequence of API calls allows you to write API tests, add documentation, spin up mock servers, and run your API calls ongoing or on demand. And organizing your APIs like this allows you to explore and share your work with others. So why run a collection in Docker Desktop? If you work with APIs, you know that there's a lot of stuff that you could do with APIs, whether you're an API producer or an API consumer. So today, I'll be sharing how you can automate your API tests and debug in Docker Desktop. Let's go over to the demo. I'm here in Docker Desktop. And if you go to the extensions marketplace, you can search for Newman. Uh, Newman is Postman's open source project that allows us to run these collections from inside Docker Desktop. So I'll install the extension. And once it's installed, you'll see the Newman extension here under extensions. So let's select that. And the first thing that we'll need is our Postman API key. This allows us to retrieve our Postman data, like our collections or our environments. If you don't know where your Postman API key is, you can look under your Postman settings, but I should have this on my clipboard. So look away, pretend you don't see my API key. But once you have your Postman API key, Docker Desktop will remember your API key so that you can retrieve your collections environments until you log out. So let's retrieve our Postman collections. And now that I've authenticated with my Postman API key, I can access all of my Postman stuff. So I can select from the collections I have. I have one called Test Script Examples. And if I have environments, I can run my collection against a corresponding environment. My environment might have configuration details about server environments or test users with credentials for certain profiles. So let me run my test script examples collection against my test environment and hit run collection. Depending on how long your collection is, how many requests, how many tests, how many scripts you have in your collection, this could take a while to run. But what's happening on the behind the scenes is that Postman's Newman is running all those requests and running all those tests. So let's take a look at the output. There's this um, HTML presentation that summarizes the collection run. So I see the total number of iterations, requests, some metadata. Here's a collection description in Markdown, timings and data, and a summary table at the bottom talking about my requests, scripts, tests, and assertions. 
So if I scroll back up to the top, I can also drill down and filter by total requests. You can see I have 25 requests in this collection. The number of failed tests, I have 16 failed tests, and skip tests if I have any. So if I go back to any of these filters, I can take a look at this folder, expand the folder, and select certain requests that were run, and I can see the request description in metadata. So this is the Markdown request description. Here's request information about the method, the URL, the response code, test pass percentage, request headers, cookies, request information, and also response information. Um, I'm not sure what this endpoint is, but here's the request body, and if I want to take a look at it somewhere outside of Docker Desktop, I can copy the request body to my clipboard and do the same thing with responses. I don't know what this endpoint is. So now that we've run one collection, we can run another. Let's click Run, run New Collection, and maybe I want to run test scenarios for a logged-in user or a non-logged-in user or run a collection with tests, or maybe I wanna run against a different server environment. I can do that to my heart's liking. This one I think is a little bit shorter of a collection, so it shouldn't take as long. And here we go. I have three total requests, four failed tests, et cetera, et cetera, and I can take a look at that. So one thing I do wanna call out, it's very exciting to be able to run these collections in Docker Desktop, especially while I'm doing development, I can run these tests on demand, but some of the beauty of containers, I think this is a best practice, is you can recreate the exact environment that you want to be running your tests against. So Postman is, um, it's Postman's Newman. There's a very popular Newman Docker image that you can use to then recreate and run your tests against the test environment that you specifically want to be um, testing against. So let us know how you're using this extension. Thank you, Joyce, for this amazing session. It was great to know that one can automate an API test and debug in Docker using Postman Newman's extension. As we talk about microservices, we know that these services communicate to each other through the endpoints, right? Now, it becomes equally important for our developers to understand the behavior of each endpoints, whether it is slow, whether it is throwing some kind of an error. And that's where our next extension, Akita extensions, come into the picture. To take this discussion further, I would like to invite Versilis Tyson. He is a founding engineer at Akita Software. He helps his team create tools to make monitoring and observing system behavior accessible to any developers. He is based out of SFO. And today, he is here to share his own story about the brand new Akita Software Docker extension. Over to you, Versilis. If you're responsible for running a web service, you will probably want to answer questions like, what are my slowest endpoints? Which endpoints are throwing errors? What are my endpoints that are still in use? Akita makes it possible to answer these questions without extensive setup or maintenance cost. All you have to do is let our agent watch your API traffic and Akita will do the rest. With Akita's Docker desktop extension, we've made it even easier to set up Akita to watch your traffic. To start using the Docker extension, you'll need to sign up for our beta. If you haven't already, click here in the app to do that. To start traffic collection, simply provide the API credentials and project created during initial onboarding in Akita's web dashboard. Optionally, you can choose to filter traffic the Akita agent will collect by port or container. This will be helpful if you'd like Akita to only collect traffic for a specific app or service. After starting the agent, navigate back to Akita's dashboard to look at your first API model. Akita documents your API traffic exhaustively, which empowers you to have a transparent understanding of your system. Akita's dashboard provides an all-in-one solution for viewing your API models along with their corresponding metrics and errors. The main page provides a quick overview of your overall traffic amount, latency, and errors over the past week. For a more comprehensive view of your API models, navigate to the API Model tab. Here, you can look at your endpoints by amount of traffic, P90, and search your endpoints by path. To narrow down your search, 
You can also filter your endpoints by different kinds of properties, such as HTTP method, host, or authentication type. If you'd like to see your API models in a more standard format, click here to download the open API specs generated by Akita. To view more fine-grained details, click on the endpoint that you want to learn more about. In this modal, you'll be able to view properties such as path and query parameters, headers, and request and response bodies. Huh. It looks like one of my endpoints is returning 404s that I didn't expect. For real-time information on the health of your app or service, we can navigate to the Metrics and Errors page where you can visualize statistics such as client error counts by endpoint. Let's check the Forex count over the past week to see how this endpoint has been performing. With Akita, you can quickly diagnose API problems that would be difficult to detect otherwise. But what if you'd like to update the traffic Akita collects? If you'd like to update traffic filters or your targeted project, navigate back to Akita's Docker extension, click on the gear icon, change your desired settings and click apply and restart. Once the agent is restarted, click on View Container to check the status of the Akita agent. As I mentioned, we're in beta and would love for you to try us out. Akita will empower you and your development team to have a better understanding of your underlying systems. Give us feedback to help us build the API monitoring and observability tool you wish you had. To learn more about Akita's Docker desktop extension, check out the docs at docs.akita.software. If you haven't already joined Akita's private beta, click on the link in the app to request an invite. Did you know that Docker extension also lets you to use third-party tools within a Docker desktop to extend its functionality. Sounds interesting. One of the most popular Docker Hub image today on the Docker Hub is Dive. This is a tool which helps you to explore a Docker image, layer contents and discover a new way to shrink your image. This Docker image has been pulled 500,000 times from Docker Hub. So today we have a Prakar Sivastav, a senior software engineer working at Google who built an extension out of his curiosity. Today he is here with us to show how he built a dive-in Docker extension and how it is useful for the developers. Let's hear from him. Thank you Ajit for that introduction. Hey everyone, I'm Prakar and today I'm going to be talking about an extension that I recently wrote for Docker called Dive-in. Now, Dive-in extension is built on top of an excellent CLI tool by Alex Goodman called Dive. So let's spend a couple of minutes talking about what Dive does, and then we'll jump back into the Dive-in extension. So Dive is an open source tool, uh, which is extremely popular uh, in the open source, uh, in the Docker community, as you can see from these stats. Uh, but primarily its main job is uh, as a tool is to help users explore a Docker image, its layer contents, and discover ways to shrink the size of the Docker image. Um, now, Dive is primarily a CLI tool, and that's the only interfaces of it offers. You can invoke uh, Dive right from your CLI on an image that you have uh, locally, and it'll tell you uh, some of its contents, its efficiency, where the space is getting used, uh, etc. Uh, for some people, this might be totally fine, uh, the CLI interface, but for some, this can be a bit cumbersome to navigate. And so uh, what dive in extension does is basically you presents all this information uh, in, in, in the Docker extension. Uh, but before we jump to that, there's one other cool thing I want to point out about dive, which is this idea of uh, the, the CI uh, flag. And what this allows you to do is if you want this kind of a, uh, analysis or a check in your continuous integration pipeline, um, then uh, the dive tool can be really helpful. So if you can see here in this screenshot, it analyzes an image and it gives three main stats, for example, efficiency, wasted bytes, and the user percentage. And then it either passes or fails uh, uh, an image based on uh, the thresholds that can be uh, that can be set by you. And so this is extremely useful in a, a CI pipeline where before deploying an image to production, you want to make sure. Uh, that passes kind of a size threshold 
um, and so this is this is very helpful in setting that up so let's jump to dive in so like i said dive is built on top of the uh, the dive tool and it provides all the features uh, that that does uh, except the CI flag, uh, except the CI option, which obviously does not make sense because Docker Desktop is meant to be run locally uh, on your laptop uh, during development. So let's now switch to the Docker Desktop and see what dive in, uh, what the interface looks like. So let me quickly switch. Okay, cool. So as soon as you boot up dive in, it lists all the images that you have locally uh, in, in this nice uh, layout uh, grid. So all you have to do uh, to understand uh, the image is basically just click on an analyze button. So I can click the analyze button for the getting started image by Docker. Uh, it should take a few seconds and once it's completed, it shows me uh, the stats here. So like I said, this is the same data that you would get from Dive, but presented in a slightly easy to use uh, UI. Uh, so you can see here, uh, it gives three main uh, important bits of information right at the top. And this is what dive uses for passing or like failing a check in in this in the ci uh, setup and so as we can see here the total size of the image the inefficient bytes and the overall efficiency score uh, it also shows what are the largest files sorted by the size so this is a good way to know what files are taking how much space and if you want to start diving into where can i reduce uh, images that's where this is a good starting point it also shows what are the layers now, uh, most of you might already know, uh, a Docker image is made up of layers stacked on top of each other, and every layer adds some extra, some space, uh, consumes some storage, and so you can see here, that gives you all the layers that, were cons that are used uh, in building this image, the size of them, and what uh, sort of command uh, sort of added that layer. And again, this is also very helpful in uh, diving deep into uh, what, what are the number of layers, the number of layers is very important when like pushing and pulling from Docker Hub or any other artifact registry. So all of this information is really helpful and important in figuring out uh, uh, the overall size and where uh, yeah and, and where the usage is going. So let's go back uh, back to images and you can again like uh, try another one of uh, another one uh, from this list here. One thing I want to point out that the amount of time it takes for the analysis is strongly proportional to the size of the image for larger images since the layers are larger the the number of files that has to analyze is much longer so if you if you've noticed uh, the first image was just 30 mb and this is like 112 mb so almost like around uh, uh, three times and it it took slightly longer so in this case you're analyzing the the reddest image and you'll see here the total size of the image the inefficient bytes and the in the efficiency score uh, and again, it's the same data uh, visualized in a, in a nice table where you can see the total size uh, of the main files in this image. You can also go down and you can see all the layers uh, in, in, in the image. And uh, that is mostly it. Uh, I would like to encourage the community to try out this tool. Uh, um, and if there are any issues or feature requests that you have in mind that will that will make this tool better, Feel free to drop, uh, create an issue, or submit a PR, or uh, yeah, any kind of contribution is uh, extremely valuable. Mm, and thank you so much for having me. Okay, with this, we are towards the end of the session. I would like to thank each of the speakers for their time and effort. Thank you so much for watching us till the end. If you are building an extension or want to share some ideas, feel free to visit docker.com slash extensions hyphen ideas. This is a discussion forum that we use to collect suggestions for a new Docker extensions. Don't forget to upload ideas which you'd like to see. Thank you again and have a great day.